Hello everyone, this is Robert Kelly, the host and writer of this podcast, Record All Monsters. So what we have here today um, for episode 7.5, this is really just an extended preview of a roundtable I'm participating in called Kongzillathon over on the This Will Work Probably Podcast Network for their show, um, Podcasters Assemble which is uh, they get a bunch of podcasters together to talk about movies in a series. And this one they're doing is leading up to Godzilla vs. Kong in a couple of weeks now. (laughs) In a few weeks now, that'll be out uh, at the end of March. And here we are, middle of February. So um, what they do is they, they ask you for your thoughts on the film. And you send that in an audio form, and they cut it up and kind of talk about the movie. They kind of format it to be like a conversation. You know how those documentaries are where you have a whole bunch of interviewees? And as they go through talking about various subjects uh, related to the main topic, they'll pull the relevant clips. And that's what this is. That's all this is. It was a lot of fun to write this and record it. And to hear it in the full context of their first episode, which was on the original King Kong. The same day that this is coming out, their episode on the original uh, Godzilla from 1954 will be coming out. So what I have here coming up is the, uh, the full versions of the essays that were chopped up and inserted into the full context of the show. So first you're going to hear the King Kong one, and there'll be a quick ad. And then you'll hear my thoughts on Godzilla, King of the Monsters. These are basically abridged versions of the episodes on those two movies that I've already done. So if you want, you can go ahead and skip this one. Well... Let it, let it play through, because that's good for my statistics. At least get to the ad. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's just a quick something, to have something in the feed. And I'll be back at the end of this, uh, just to give you all the usual rundown of what's going on with the show. So, enjoy these two uh, bonus essays. Hello, I'm Robert Kelly, host and writer of Record All Monsters, and I'm here to talk to you about 1933's King Kong. The first time I saw that particular film, it was the summer before I started fourth grade, and we were visiting my recently divorced uncle. His apartment was very beige, and the only TV was in his bedroom. He let me and my older sisters watch TV there while he and my parents caught up in the living room. As we were flipping through the channels in his enormous satellite TV program, We shot past a movie I knew on sight was King Kong, despite never having seen it before. I begged my sisters to stop and watch it. It seemed to surprise them that I hadn't seen it yet. I'd been a fan of monster movies since I was three years old, and Godzilla was particularly dear to my heart. So how how I had not seen the original King Kong? I'd even seen the Dino De Laurentiis version from the 70s. Recognizing the importance of this movie to me, my sisters, by a vote of two to three, agreed that we would watch King Kong, and it was wonderful. So far as immersive movie experiences go, only The Wizard of Oz had ever engulfed me so completely before. Of course, Kong is the star of the show, even if Robert Armstrong and Bruce Cabot and Fay Ray are all built above him and the monstrous menagerie of dinosaurs and other prehistoric reptiles he faces off against during their time on Skull Island dazzle almost as much. But there's something like a humanity in Kong, and we see it from the very first image of his grim, grinning visage leering over the tree line at Andaro to the last pleading, soulful glance he has of her as he loses his grip on the world's tallest building. We can't ignore the above-mentioned human characters, and the one the most deserving of praise, in my opinion, is Robert Armstrong's Carl Denham. He has, I feel, the best line in the film. Listen, I'm going out to make the greatest picture in the world, something that nobody's ever seen or heard of. You'll have to think of a lot of new adjectives when I come back. 
and captures a sense of awe and wonder in his performance, making it hard for us to realize that he really is the antagonist by the time he declares Kong to be the eighth wonder of the world, and that the film's perspective has intentionally or not shifted to the King of Skull Island over the course of the film. As I researched this film for my own show, I came across a behind-the-scenes fact that brought a tear of joy to my face. While Kong was animated by the renowned Willis O'Brien, he was built and sculpted by Marcel Delgado, a Mexican-American man like myself who had been hired by O'Brien for his keen and artistic eye. Here at the beginning of my research into the beginning of my favorite film genre was a man who looked like me, who shared my heritage, and who was key in bringing it to life. For my full thoughts on King Kong, check out Record All Monsters where we look at the history of giant monster movies as a narrative story, starting with this very film. It's a great way to beef up on your kaiju knowledge before Godzilla vs. Kong arrives in theaters and on HBO Max on March 31st. That way you can be the obnoxious nerd who knows too much about the film's references and deep cuts, who all your friends ask to explain when the movie is over. Remember, monsters are your friends. Podcasters, assemble! Hello, I'm Robert Kelly, host of Record All Monsters, and this is an ad for Anchor. That's right, an ad for Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. I was super intimidated to start this podcast until I heard about Anchor, and there are a number of things that made me feel more at ease to begin. First of all, it's free. They have creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. They distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on multiple platforms, including whatever one you're listening to, and you can make money from your podcast easily with no minimum listenership. All you do is enter your information, Anchor takes care of the rest. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. This is the mandatory call for action that I have to read out now, but it's true. You can download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. I've been Robert Kelly, host of Record All Monsters, and this has been an ad for Anchor. Hello, I'm Robert Kelly, host and writer of Record All Monsters, and I'm here to talk to you about 1954's Godzilla and 1956's Godzilla, King of the Monsters. First of all, I'm fairly certain most of this episode's contributors will extol the virtues of Yoshiro Honda's 1954 masterwork, and that is right and just. But sometimes, when it comes to Terry Morse and Josephine Levine's 1956 U.S. import version, I find myself in the role of John the Baptist, the lone voice crying out in the desert. Actually, this movie's pretty good! And also, it was completely necessary at the time. Looking at the foreign film landscape in America today, you might be tempted to think that it was sometime around the birth of the Criterion Collection that it occurred to Western distributors to simply subtitle movies not made in English when releasing them in English-speaking markets. But this is not the case. No, as a matter of fact, this was incredibly common. I go into the reasons in more depth in the third full episode of Record All Monsters, but it was also detrimental to the film's box office potential. So when Joseph Levine saw Godzilla and decided to distribute it in the U.S., he knew changes to this uniquely Japanese film would be necessary to make it work for an American audience in the mid-1950s. Raymond Burr brings a believable gravitas to his role as international reporter Steve Martin, And while his integration into the story isn't always seamless, it's definitely well and artfully done. Though some scenes are cut or shortened, this does frequently improve the film's pacing. And I'll leave it up to you if that's worth losing almost 20 minutes of footage, though. What is not cut, for the most part, are the real reasons that people are still watching these movies today. The scenes featuring Armand Starr, if you'll forgive a very bad and overused pun. Even in this Americanized version of the film, the power, terror, and poignancy of Godzilla's appearance is intact. The visual effects, masterminded by Eiji Tsuburaya, a personal hero of mine, give us a number of iconic and meaning-laden images. Two that always resonate with me are Godzilla, framed through the window behind a birdcage, as if he's also imprisoned within it, and Godzilla again, moments before his death simply walking peacefully along the seafloor in Tokyo Bay. These images emphasize an uncomfortable truth. Godzilla is our victim, as much as we are his. 
For my full thoughts on Godzilla and its imported U.S. version, check out episode 3 of Record All Monsters. We talk about everything discussed above and also go over uh, our Godzilla bona fides. We tell a few stories about growing up as Godzilla fans. And those will make for great conversation fodder, as you claim is your own life experience, while you drive with friends to see Godzilla vs. Kong on March 31st, if you live in a place where theaters are safely opened. That way, everyone will know you're not some kind of fake nerd like that guy Timmy. And I know we all feel the same way about him. So, remember that monsters are your friends. And they're my friends, too. Podcasters! Assemble! So that's it. That's uh, what's going on over here now. If you want to hear these essays in the context of the full episode, which I do recommend, it's a lot of fun just to hear these other thoughts on the films. Uh, You can head on over. I believe the link is in the bio or in the description. uh, To the This Will Work Probably or we can make this work, probably, Podcast Network, and their show, Podcasters Assemble. I'll be doing this uh, as long as they're doing it, doing these short contributions. So next week here, we're going to have an interview I'm very excited about with Derek M. Cook from Monster Kid Radio. We recorded this a few weeks ago. I've been editing. There were some problems near the end. Some of the audios overlapped, and I can't quite separate it out. But um, it was still so much fun to talk to Derek. He's a great guy. He does so much for you know, kind of the classic uh, horror and monster movie community. He's just a great guy, and it's great to have this working relationship with him. Um, we hope to have him back many times over the course of our show because he's great fun to talk with. I've also been on his show, um, Monster Kid Radio, is on episode 499, uh, back, way back in November of 2020, way back, just a few months ago. And uh, that was a great time too, so if you haven't checked that out already, go ahead and find that. It's a lot of fun. We'll be having, for episode 9... Nathaniel Ross Smith is coming back to talk with us about the British monster movie Conga, which is one of my favorites because it's absolutely ridiculous. I love it so much. Michael Goff is in it, and that plays into the game that we play on that episode. If you want to help the show out, I don't think the Rondo nominations have been announced, so go ahead and nominate us for a Rondo if you're comfortable doing that. Um... Just send an email to taraku at aol.com. That's T-A-R-A-C-O at aol.com. And uh, say, hey, uh, if you want, you can nominate this podcast, Record All Monsters. is very good, very good monster movie podcast. Newcomer, great. And I'm rambling now. So I'm just going to remind you that uh, monsters are your friends. See you next week.